Section 2 of Chapter 6 is another one of those uh, sections that's relatively short as far as what we're trying to accomplish here. There's not a lot of slides. Uh, there's not really a whole lot of content to it. And this is stuff that you uh, should have done a little bit in Algebra 2. So this becomes a little bit more of a review uh, than anything. All right. So what we're talking about is uh, we're going to be multiplying polynomials. Now in the first section, we basically just worked with the whole addition, subtraction, and all that stuff. Uh, looked a little bit at some graphs to kind of figure out where they're increasing and decreasing and to figure out to the different, you know, a number of zeros or amount of zeros that different polynomials will have depending on the power, uh, the highest power that is present. All right, so what we're going to focus on here is multiplying. And then uh, it says use the binomial expansion theorem um, to talk about how, you know, basically it's kind of like when you see a binomial squared, that means you take it times itself. Uh, generalized, similar idea to what we're going to do here. Um, we're just going to have powers that are a little bit higher than two. All right. So basically, what you want to think about here is, you know, it talks about multiplying a polynomial by a monomial. Uh, we're just going to distribute. All right. Uh, we talked about a specific type of kind of multiplication with polynomials when we talked about foiling. Uh, but foiling is just a term that's reserved for a situation where you have a binomial times a binomial. All right. The same rules generally apply to all the rest of the stuff here. So I'm just going to kind of start and be brief as I go through some of this. So if I'm taking, you know, this 4y squared times everything that's inside, I'm just going to distribute it. So if I take 4y squared times y squared, I'm going to get 4y to the fourth uh, plus 12y squared. Now the important thing to remember here is uh, back from the beginning of the year when we talked about properties of exponents, if you have the same base, okay, in this case here I have a y and I have a y, and I am multiplying them together, I just add exponents. All right, so that's why the y squared times the y squared gives me y to the fourth. All right, now remember, again, that's a property uh, we deal with when we're multiplying terms together. Okay, so multiplicative property of exponents, all right, we multiply and we add the exponents together. Now that only works if their bases are the same. All right, if I'm taking x squared times y squared, their bases are no longer the same. So the most I can do with that is just write it as x squared y squared. All right, and you're going to have a good, you know, a good example of this on the bottom here with uh, letter B. All right, I'm going to distribute. I'm just going to take it and I'm going to distribute to everything that's in parentheses. All right, now. Again, we just have to be aware of the common, you know, bases and what we do with our exponents. So if I take fg times f to the fourth, I actually get f to the fifth g. Plus, all right, if I take fg times 2f to the third g, I'm going to get 2f to the fourth g squared. Okay, again, I'm just adding exponents. If you don't see an exponent present, you just assume that it's raised to the first power. All right now, minus, I'm going to have 3f to the third, g to the third. And my last one down here, I'm going to get plus f squared g to the fourth. Now, what I would want to do is I'd want to go back and look to make sure that I cannot combine anything that's there. Now, an important thing to remember here is if I have f to the second, g to the fourth, that would be the same as having g to the fourth f to the second. Okay, remember, uh, multiplication is commutative, meaning the order doesn't matter. So as long as the powers are the same and we're multiplying, these two terms here represent the same thing. Okay, now what you'd probably want to do if you go back and you have that happen is you'd want to probably arrange them so you have the the letters in you know the same order. It makes things a little bit easier. But based on what I have at the bottom here. I can't combine any like terms, so I just go ahead and leave it. All right, now we're going to move forward here a little bit, and we're going to talk about um, what happens when you have something more than just a monomial times a polynomial. All right, so in this case, I'm going to have a binomial times a trinomial, or essentially, if you want to keep things really general, we just say we have a polynomial times a polynomial. Now, it's not foiling uh, because it's not two terms times two terms. 
All right, so we're just going to think about I'm going to distribute each term in the first parenthesis to each term in the second parenthesis. So essentially, what I'm doing is I am just distributing twice. All right, so I'm going to take the A and I'm going to distribute it to everything that's in the second set of parentheses. So that is going to give me 2A minus 5A squared plus A to the third. All right, then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to distribute the negative 3 to everything. All right, so negative 6 plus 15A minus 3A squared. Now, the general process of what we're doing here is very simple. But what you need to be careful of is you need to make sure you get the correct signs. All right, I'm taking a negative 3 times everything that's in the second parenthesis. So signs are important because if you end up putting a positive where there should have been a negative, you're going to get the complete wrong answer at the very end. All right, And that's not one of those things that I'm going to be real lenient with as we go through here either because it's something that we need to do a better job of. All right, It's, it's simple math, but we get in a hurry and we don't do it correctly. So um, like I said, I'm not going to be as lenient as far as if it's a four-point problem and you make a mistake with a plus or minus, that's a major part of what's going on here. So you're not going to get the benefit of the doubt on a lot of those. All right, now, now this becomes basically addition subtraction problem. I combine like terms. So I'm going to look, here's my highest power. There's nothing else that has an a to the third. So I'm going to have a to the third in my answer. All right, I have negative 5a squared, negative 3a squared. So that's going to give me negative 8a squared. Okay, again, be aware of what happens when you put negatives together. Okay, uh, then I have a 15a and a 2a. So 15a plus 2a is going to be plus 17a. And then the last thing I have would just be this negative 6 that's here in the middle, nothing else to combine it with. So it becomes negative 6. Now, when you get to that point where you start combining like terms, I just think about everything as ad addition. Okay, even when I had the negative 5a squared, I'm going to think about adding it to a negative 3a squared. So negative 5 plus negative 3 is going to give me negative 8. All right, so like I said here, we're not really reinventing the wheel or anything. All right, we just have to be careful as far as our signs go. Now, here's the next step. And what we're looking at is a trinomial times a trinomial, or again, in general terms, a binomial times a binomial. Or excuse me, not a polynomial times a polynomial, not bi. We have more than, more than two terms. All right, so I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to distribute again every term in the first to every term in the second. So I'm going to start with those y squared. So it's going to be y to the fourth, all right, minus y to the third, minus 3y squared. All right, then we're going to take this negative 7y, distribute it everywhere. Okay, so negative 7y times y squared is going to be negative 7y to the third. Uh, then I'm going to get positive 7y squared. Okay, negative and negative there. And then negative 7y times negative 3 is going to give me plus 21y. Right, and the last, I'm going to take the 5 times everything that's over there. All right, now I'm going to actually run out of room, so I'm going to have going on two lines here. But 5 times y squared is going to give me plus 5y squared. All right, 5 times negative y is going to give me negative 5y. And 5 times negative 3 is going to give me negative 15. All right, now you can see how this process becomes a little bit long and drawn out. All right, so I'm not going to have, give you a whole ton of homework problems to go with this, but you need to make sure that you understand how to do the ones that you are given. All right, so again, combine like terms. There's only one y to the fourth, so that's going to stay, and I'm actually going to cross these out as I go. All right, now I'm looking for y to the third. So I have negative y to the third, negative 7y to the third. Add them together, and I'm going to get negative 8y to the third. Okay, so those are done. All right, negative 3y squared plus 7y squared would give me 4y squared plus another 5y squared is going to give me plus 9y squared. All right, then 21y plus negative 5 is going to be plus 16y. And then I have my minus 15. All right, so you end up with a, uh, a quartic polynomial there, okay, as far as having the highest power be a 4 right there. Okay, so again, it's not like we're doing a whole lot different between those two types of problems. Um, it just becomes a little bit different uh, because you have more terms to deal with. All right, now, uh, story problem type stuff. Um, 
you know, I'm not going to get into this a whole lot. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, they're not really as difficult. Again, we really, really struggle with these because we don't even want to make an effort um, to try to do them a whole, a whole lot of the time. We see all of a sudden we see a story problem, and we basically just throw in the towel and say, "Oh, that's probably going to be hard, so I don't want to do it." And you know, I've started taking off on some of you guys' assignments. If you leave those story problems blank because they're not that difficult, you just don't want to try them. All right. So here's another example. It says a standard burly box is p feet by three feet by four feet. A large burly box has 1.5 feet added to each uh, dimension. Write a polynomial in standard form that can be used to find the volume of a large burly box. All right, well, we have the dimensions of the standard one. All right, and basically it says the dimensions of everything else is just uh, 1.5 feet longer. So to remember, to find volume, volume is a matter of taking your length times your width times your height. Okay, so basically I just need to take all three of those dimensions together. So I have P plus 1.5 as one of my dimensions, just adding 1.5 to that. Uh, then I have 3P plus 1.5. And then I have 4P plus 1.5. Alright, so really that's your general setup there. Length times width times height of the large box. Now, I'm not going to go ahead and go through... Um, for the sake of time here, how to do this because now it generally becomes the same type of problem you had before. All right, you need to go ahead and just distribute. Okay, now what I would do is I would start with, you know, this over here. All right, multiply those. Essentially, this is that part is kind of like foiling, but foil those, simplify, and then whatever you get for your answer down here, you're going to go ahead and multiply times those two. All right, or essentially distribute that p and that plus 1.5 to everything you have there, and you'll arrive at a answer. All right, um, and it says polynomial, so it wants you to or function that is a polynomial, so it wants you to label it like a function, and it already tells you in the problem this is what it wants you know your label to be. All right, so again, the setup is 90% of these problems. You get it set up. Now you have again, like I said, a problem that is very similar to everything that we've talked about already. Okay. All right. Now, the last part of what we're going to talk about here is what happens when we're expanding something. Now, remember back um, when we were talking about foiling, and we had uh, we were completing the square, and we ended up with squares of binomials. Remember, that does not mean that I just get x squared plus four in the inside. It means that I have to write the whole thing according to the number of the exponents. So basically I have the whole thing times itself. That's what something squared means. All right, well down here, all right, I have a very, another, you know, kind of general problem, but you'll see it's raised to the third and not the second. So what that means is I have to take the whole thing times itself three times. All right, now this is a similar setup to what we just had on the story problem. And I'm actually going to start with the back two-thirds of this here. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and foil that. So, or think about, if we want to think about in terms of what we've done already in this lesson, I'm going to distribute each term to the second set of parentheses. So I'm going to get a squared uh, plus 2ab. And then in the middle here, I'm going to get another. It's actually, it's going to look like 2ba but I'm just going to write it as 2ab because it means the same thing, and I already have that written here once. All right, and then the last part is going to give me plus 4b squared. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and simplify and combine those. So a squared plus it's going to be 4ab plus 4b squared. All right, now I'm not done. I have to remember about this first part that's still up here in the front. Okay, now. Again, when I did this middle part here, technically it looks like it should be 2ba. That is the same thing as 2ab, and that's why I wrote it down here, 2ab, as far as the second one is concerned, because I already had a 2ab, and they mean the same thing. Don't confuse yourself by writing it in two separate ways when you know that multiplication is commutative, and you can rearrange them to work either way. Have it work the way that benefits you the most. All right, now we're back to a problem like we started with. I'm going to distribute the a to everything, and then I'm going to go ahead and distribute the 2b to everything. 
Okay, so a times a squared gives me a to the third. Uh, a times 4ab is going to give me plus 4a squared b. And then a times 4b squared is going to be 4ab squared. All right, now the 2b to everything. So first I'm going to get plus 2a squared b. And then I'm going to get, uh, let's see, that was my first one. I'm going to get 2b times 4ab, which is actually going to give me plus 8ab uh, squared. And then the last terms, the 2b times the 4b squared, is going to give me plus 8b to the third. All right, now, I'm kind of running out of room here a little bit, so I'm going to kind of try to simplify on the side here, see what I can combine. Now, again, only a uh, to the third term, so I'm going to just write it up over here, a to the third. Now, this is where you just have to be careful to make sure you have the exact same terms as we go through here. Uh, I'm going to look for anything that has an a squared in it now. And standard form kind of gets thrown out the window a little bit with these just because you start mixing variables around. And One time the a squared, the next time is the b squared. But I'm just going to start with a to the third, and now I'm going to look for anything that has an a squared in it. So I have 4a squared b, 2a squared b. So if I put those together, I have plus... 6a squared b. All right, so those are done. All right, now I'll just move down so anything that has an a. All right, so this and this are ab squared. So I actually have plus 12 ab squared. So get rid of those. And I just have that plus 8b to the third left when I'm done. Okay, so again, the reason I didn't give you a whole ton of problems with this particular section is because um, they do tend to take a little bit of time. All right, so just make sure that you understand how to do each individual problem. Now, this is something here. Uh, I don't know how much we're really going to get into this. Um, I don't know how many of you are familiar with what's called Pascal's triangle, but it's something that you know we can use the coefficients of Pascal's triangle to kind of identify. Um, the different coefficients that we're going to end up getting if we expand something, you know, uh, to the second, to the third, to the fourth, and to the fifth. Now, I just wanted to bring this up on here. Uh, what we will probably do is we'll probably worry a little bit more about this uh, in class if we have to. Um, so I'm just showing you this chart. It wouldn't be a bad idea to, you know, write down this chart, uh, make a note on your notes. But basically what happens is if you can follow the pattern that exists in this particular column uh, and you know what your A and your B are to start with, you can kind of just fill in numbers because you know that these numbers over here are going to be the coefficients uh, for each of the terms that you end up with. So basically what this is saying is if you have something that's expanded and has a polynomial or polynomial power of 5, means you're actually going to get six terms, and these represent the coefficients that would be on all of them. Okay. Now, again, we're going to work more on this in class a little bit because I think it's something that it's not difficult, but I can see us getting confused on it right away and just giving up because that's what we tend to do when it's something new and we're not 100% sure about it. Okay. So what this does right here, again, and this would be something that would be a pretty good idea for you to take notes on a little bit, is just how you would use that previous chart okay and go ahead and be able to essentially multiply something without really multiplying a whole lot and expanding things out okay so make note of this we're gonna talk about it a little bit more in class All right? and you can see on the bottom um, technically we're kinda jumping ahead because we don't really talk about Pascal's triangle or anything like that until chapter 11 okay so uh, with something like this I'm gonna go through let me see here I'll go through one more. Uh, I'm not going to go through the fifth one because that will take a little time and I want you to think about it. But I'm going to go through one more here um, just so you have a chance to kind of see it one more time. Something a little more uh, general uh, that doesn't have some of the A's and B's in it. And then we'll, you know, obviously, you can see we'll finish up here. All right, so I'm going to, again, I'm going to focus on this part. All right, so I'm going to say K squared minus 5K minus 5k plus 25, all right, essentially just foiling that out, 
So k squared minus 10k plus 25. All right. Now that's just kind of part of the means to getting to the end here. So now I have to go ahead and distribute twice both the k and the negative 5 into that. Okay. And again, we're, we're skipping the Pascal's triangle part. We're actually just, I want you to be able to do the full multiplication. We'll talk about the Pascal's triangle aspect of it in class a little bit on um, uh, the next time we meet. All right, but I'm going to distribute. So there's going to give me k to the third. Here's going to give me negative 10k squared. Here I'm going to get uh, plus 25k. Kind of wish I had 25k plus 25k. Um, negative 5k squared. There's going to give me plus 50k. Plus 50k in my pocket would be even better. And at the end here, negative 5 times 25 is going to give me negative 125. Okay? So again, now we're just down to combining like terms. I don't have anything to combine with the k to the third, so that stays. Um, negative 10k squared, negative 5k squared, negative 15k squared. Um, so those are done. Ks. 25k plus 50k, a cool 75k, and the minus 125, there's nothing else to combine with it, so it stays as is. All right, so you'd have a cubic polynomial as your answer. Now, like I said, uh, I'm not going to go through this last example. It'd be something that you can think about on your own. All right, so you have the means to handle everything that's on your assignment. Uh, hopefully you took some notes over that Pascal's Triangle stuff. If you didn't, you should probably go back and do so. Uh, it'll be something that we'll talk about in class, and you'll actually kind of see the benefit of it and how um, handy it can actually be as far as solving some of those, especially when you start expanding things that are to the fourth power and to the fifth power that tend to take quite a bit of time if you try to do them longhand. All right, if you have any questions, just as usual, make sure you ask. All right, thank you.